Hello and welcome to our talk. Today, I'm going to present a declarative specification for unstructured mesh editing algorithms. And this is a collaboration between several academic and industry institutes, including New York University, the University of Victoria, Meta, Tencent, and Adobe. Mesh editing is about the generation and adaptation of meshes. Meshing or remeshing is the process of building a new mesh from scratch or changing an existing one according to a series of requirements. The requirements typically come from different applications, where we may want fewer degree of freedom to render efficiently or more details to accurately resolve physical phenomena. Also, the triangle shapes are important because they're crucial to numerical solvers. And moreover, a common us is that we want the new mesh to be similar to the original, based on distance or other similarities, and so on. Once we have a mesh that satisfies such properties, they enable many applications, including character and scene animation, geometric modeling, scientific computing, fluid simulation, biomechanical simulation, and much more. Naturally, researchers have investigated designing algorithms that tackle these different tasks. There is still no silver bullet, but there have been already uh, many great ideas, starting from different mathematical principles and realizations. Different algorithms work on different applications and domains. For example, planar triangulation, surface and volume remeshing, shell and boundary layers, and also higher order meshes. Developing and implementing a mesh editor is a challenging task. The program must maintain a customized mesh adjacency, mesh navigation, and attributes on top. The algorithm also needs to consider memory, threading, and buffer issues. In a typical problem, the logic of these different components is mixed, making the implementation and debugging highly non-trivial. Today, I'm not going to introduce another algorithm, but rather I will talk about some experiences we have gained while working in this field and would like to share these experiences to design better and more robust mesh editing algorithms. We present a declarative way of building mesh editing algorithms, and our primary motivation is to enable easy customization and development of these algorithms via a new specification. We have the following goals. To enable modularity, we separate the concept of mesh attributes from their connectivity. So the user code only manage customizable attributes like colors, positions, boundary conditions, and so on. This allows different applications to take advantage from the same abstraction and infrastructure. So extend, extending the same algorithm to preserve new attributes or properties only need minimal changes. Next, for usability, we observe that building an algorithm on a fixed mesh is much easier because we know how to traverse a graph. However, the main pain point of mesh editing is bookkeeping these changes. Our specification ensures that all the user codes can assume a valid underlying mesh to navigate. This significant reduction in bookkeeping makes our framework easier to use and debug. In terms of efficiency, our abstraction allows us to parallelize existing algorithms on a modern shared memory architecture, and our operations are built with blocks that eliminate risk conditions. Finally, all the typical geometric robustness issues like distance and orientation of elements are handled by the developer. This makes it challenging to run on large-scale datasets. In our specification, the user could provide customized predicate codes for geometric robustness, and these codes are automatically checked during each modification, guaranteeing their execution on various geometric datasets. To describe our new specification, let's start with some basic components. The meshes we're talking about are manifold 
unstructured triangular or tetrahedral meshes. In such a mesh, there are points, edges, faces, and tetrahedra. These elements are connected with a special kind of graph. There are many different data structures to describe a mesh. And in our implementation, we use a cell tuple data structure from Brisson 1989, where in the case of triangular meshes, we can use a tuple of face, edge, vertex to record a topological pointer. The tuple directly provide access to specific face, edge, and vertex. And as for the navigation on a given mesh, there are switch functions. Switch vertex keeps the pointer to the face and edge and only change the vertex component, which amounts to the opposite vertex. Switch edge goes to another edge in the same face, but keeping the pointer to the same vertex. And finally, switch face goes across to the adjacent triangle so that we can navigate on the whole mesh. Note that this is not the only way of navigation, not the only data structure, but cell tuple represents all kinds of elements and it generalized naturally to tetrahedral meshes and even higher dimensional manifold meshes. Now that we have an abstract mesh structure, we also need application-specific attributes on them. Commonly, there is vertex positions, and our design purposely separates the embedding positions and the abstract mesh topology to have a more generalized framework. Also, we can have colors in a graphics application. We can have feature edge taggings and boundary conditions in a physical simulation. Also, we can assign physical properties for material assignment as part of the volumetric modeling and simulation pipeline. The user can specify attributes to associate with either vertices, edges, faces, or tetrahedra. And our runtime provides automatic storage and resizing management of the attributes. In addition to attributes, to support built-in robustness, we ask the user to specify invariants. They are the properties crucial for the application and should be kept throughout each step of the remeshing process. For example, try to always stay close to the input, maintain the correct orientation, and avoid self-intersections. And this part of the specification allows us to design an algorithm that is guaranteed to have certain properties. Finally, we can talk about local operations, which are at the centerpiece of the algorithms we specify. Specifically, our specification allows describing a cleverly designed sequence of local operations that achieve the global result of a good mesh for applications. Depending on the mesh we are operating on, there is edge flip, edge split, edge collapse for triangular meshes, and more types for volumetric meshes. These operations typically affect a small neighborhood of the mesh, and they are the building blocks of mesh editing algorithms. Our system provides a wide range of template local operations, and the user code only needs to maintain how the application-dependent attributes are changed. During the process of an edge split, the user only needs to specify how the attribute changes in a small neighborhood. If an edge is marked as a feature, the application may want to duplicate such a tag after the operation. We can think about operations as a step in the optimization process. Or when you type a word in a text editor, and you see a mistake being made, you would want to one-click revert the process. Therefore, before and after each operation step, we need to know what is the current quality and whether any invariants are validated there. Typically, the program would need to simulate what happens after the change. And this bookkeeping creates challenges. In our abstraction, we move and restrict such difficulties only to our underlying runtime. As for the interface exposed, 
the user can always assume there is a valid underlying mesh to navigate using our self-topple mechanism, and they can access the current attributes being stored. Given a local operation and start from a local neighborhood, the application code simply implements before and after function. The before function look, looks, at, looks at the mesh before the change and access the corresponding attributes to decide, to decide whether this action could be taken at all. Based on the operation type, we, we will modify the mesh locally. Then the after function only look at the mesh after the change. For example, if the quality of the mesh gets improved, the invariance per predicate is also invoked at this stage. Notice that if any of these functions returns false, the operation is aborted and all the values, even in attributes, are safely reverted to the previous state. This is automatically handled by our runtime. As an example, in the application of shortest edge collapse, before could store two vertex positions into a cache and assign the average of them in the after function. Both of these functions could condition on the current quality, which you can acquire through navigation and attribute access. Each operation is executed in a local neighborhood, and then we need to schedule many operations to change the mesh globally. Our runtime maintains a queue of operations and execute them one by one. The application code to, should specify what is the priority for the operation type? For example, if you want to collapse all edges from longest to shortest. And determination. For example, when the triangle quality is satisfied or we have done enough number of collapses. Since each operation modifies existing edges and introduces new elements, we also need to specify which of the newly introduced ones in the form of tuples goes back into the queue for further operations. These three specifications form a well-defined order of execution, and now the algorithm is ready to run. Additionally, the ability to abstract the scheduling allows to parallelize the algorithm with multiple threads and shared memory. Note that this requires an initial mesh partition, which by default we use a simple Morton encoding to partition the given mesh vertices or edges. And also in order to prevent data racing, we need to specify the locking regions for each local operation type. We provide example locking regions for all the common operations. We implemented our runtime in the library called Weld Mashing Toolkit, which we release under an MIT license and host on GitHub. We're still working on the improvements since it has been proven useful in many of our other projects as well. As part of the example usage, we have implemented several popular algorithms with our abstraction. This includes surface simplification with quadric error metric, uniform triangle surface remeshing. And for volumetric meshes, we have harmonic triangulations and a simplified variant of the tap weld algorithm. All the resulting algorithms achieve similar objectives with their reference implementations. And they run robustly on large data sets and are ready to take advantage of modern parallel architectures. For the complete list of results, please refer to our paper for more details. In particular, for uniform remeshing, we're able to use all the surface-based local operations. And we can opt in the usage of envelope constraints very easily, which generates a result that is similar in shape but much better in triangle quality. The algorithm also scale nicely with the number of threads as well. For tent meshing algorithm, inspired by the tetrahedral meshing in the wild and fast tetrahedral meshing in the wild, 
we design a simplified variant of the pipeline. Our resulting algorithm is able to tetrahedralize meshes from the challenging Fini10K dataset, while being more friendly to implement, debug, improve, and parallelize. This concludes the end of our specification, and I believe there are many valuable directions to pursue as future works. First, our way of abstraction is not the only one or necessarily the optimal. We mostly draw experiences from the applications. Finding ways to measure and improve could be interesting to explore. Second, although we have a backend that provides parallelization, but the algorithm may need improvements to become friendly to multi-threading. For example, shortest edge collapse will not achieve deterministic result when the order is not strict. Also, we would like to extend the support for non-manifold meshes. This would be helpful for multi-material meshing, commonly in fluid simulation and medical applications. Finally, current implementation built on localized operation and invariance. And more global conditions on connectivity and global operations are beneficial for structured quad mesh or hex mesh operations. That's the end for today. Thank you for the attention. And please follow our repository on GitHub for more updated improvements.